So just a quick um, introduction for the world, right? Um, Debbie is my coach, and she is absolutely fabulous. Obviously, I think so because um, we're what now in a little bit over two years in our in our coaching relationship. I believe so. Yeah. And, and um, it's just man, it's been a huge benefit in my world. And so Debbie, you're out in Lubbock, Texas. Um, been doing the whole real estate thing for a long time. How long have you actually been a coach? I have been a coach. This is my tenth year. Um, be a coach. Yep. Now I want to be that guy who's a small shade, uh, small tree, big shade. You know that little uh, that little moment. One of my, and I don't mean to just start out of the gate in this, but I do feel the necessity to have this conversation. When I look at coaches, everybody who thinks they can perform a task believes that they're a coach. So it's like, oh, I can do this task, so now I'm a coach. You have gone through very rigorous trainings in coaching, and I just want you to rattle off real fast the, the space where you actually have training for being a coach. Well, um, first of all, I am, I am a professional certified coach through the ICF, which is the International Coaching Federation, and that is the most premier um, accreditation program for coaches. Um, it is not an easy credential to get. It takes years, literally years, um, to do that and lots of hours of coaching to document. Um, in addition to that, um, I've also completed, um, I'm a, um, I'm certified master practitioner in neuro-linguistic programming so that I'm understanding the language and so forth. I know that just means I get in your head. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah, no, that's exactly uh, what I mean. I, I want to open that box a little bit here in a second, though. No. Yeah, so, um, I, I really have, this is, this is my profession. This is my life. It is my passion. And I am constantly um, in, enrolled and in looking at ways that I can support people and them getting more of what they want. And yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, so when you and I were talking on Monday during our, our coaching session, we started talking about like um, some of the things that we're doing and what we can do to, to continue to, to pay it forward, right? To be able to help the industry as a whole. Um, and in all honesty, like to help anybody and everybody as a whole, because like you're, you're not just in the frame of real estate. You happen to be my real estate coach, but right. you are, gosh, I, I think where you serve your strength right now is that you're considered a, um, a transition, a transitional coach. Yes. Transformational coach. Yeah, mm -hmm. There it is. I knew yeah. that you were right. <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit. So, um, what, what does it mean to be in that transformational section? What does that mean? Well, here, here's what I've, I've come to discover, right? You may be having struggles in your real estate business. And because we are a single human being, okay, um, everything that we have going on in one part of our life actually has a ripple effect in every other area of our life. So while, you know, there are some people that specialize in, um, and maybe being more of a coach consultant in a specific area, such as real estate, we can look at that. Um, I've come to realize that it's the whole person that is important to coach. And so the transformation comes from really identifying um, how else, or maybe, um, you know, one of the things about coaching is that we discover how and what filters um, that we are having that are blocking our, our success and us becoming our, our, um, uh, our, our fullest potential. Right. And if we discover that in one area, chances are high. I'm not going to say hundred percent, but they're really high that that's showing up in one of those other areas. And so I approach it from that holistic yeah. person perspective. Which, and I think what's brilliant about that, Debbie, is that um, a lot of times when we're in conversations, um, our greatest breakthroughs that you and I have had have almost always come from a moment of, Randy, you realize these two items are connected, you're putting them into different compartments and yet they're connected. And yeah. I don't know that, um, there's a few myths about coaching, right? And, and to make a trail into a conversation about that, most people look at coaching, and at least in my opinion, as that mentor. They look at it as the mentor. And I think there's a drastic difference between the idea of a mentor and a coach. It is. What's the difference, in your opinion, as a coach, what's the biggest difference? I have my opinions, but I want to hear from you, obviously living in this day in and day out. Yeah, so I think a lot of times what our experience of a coach has been has usually been from when we've been growing up, and maybe we had that little league coach, or we had, you know, a soccer coach, or whatever the case may be. and then. We think about, um, you know, coaches, uh, you know, professional football coach or, 
uh, baseball, you know, we think about athletics and the difference is this, they're usually an expert in that particular field, that area, and they're critiquing you all along the way and they're telling you what to do and when to do it. Okay, that's that concept of a coach. Um, of a professional coach or sports coach. And so that's a lot of times been our exposure. Professional coaching of what I do is a co-creative process that we go into it together. And that's the biggest difference. Well, um, I, I, wanna, I wanna pause real fast, cause you said co-create. Yeah. And I think this is one of our challenges is that um, there's a lot of opportunity out there, right? I'm gonna go back to what I said at the very beginning. A lot of people are good at tasks. Believe sure. their coach, and then they're going to come in and say, "Oh, you want to be successful? Do these five things." Right, exactly. And coaching isn't that. And I think one of the biggest disservices that people hand you when they do that version of coaching is they take the me factor out of it. Well, yeah. But the me factor is why I started this. That's right. The me factor is why I started. So you just cut off the one thing that was the most important piece to the puzzle. Absolutely. And, you know, something else that I'll say there, and this is going to get a little bit into that neurosciences yeah. piece of it, okay? If I simply tell you what to do, you technically then didn't have any insights going on in your brain. And so there's, there, we just eliminated the opportunity for you to create new neuro pathways and, and be able to figure something out, okay? But not only that, it's like, it kind of goes back to what you said. If there's not an emotional charge for that, like something that drives that, change is not possible. I can tell you what to do all, all day long. Think about it this way, okay? You're, you're a dad, so I want you to imagine that between now and age 30, you tell your kids everything to do and when to do it. How are they going to turn out? <laughs> Very needy. Uh, extremely needy and they won't be able to generate their own insights and so then they they become dependent upon you well we do this in the workplace too um, a lot of times it's like we just tell people in the workplace what to do and we never get them involved in the process so there's really no growth going on I found this quote I want to read this quote to you because I found this whenever you and I scheduled this and it's actually from Abraham Maslow so if you've ever heard of the Maslow's hierarchy of needs this is who this came from. And this is what he said. He said, you're either going to step forward into growth or you're going to step backwards into safety. When we tell people what to do and when to do it, we don't allow them to co-create the process with us. We're basically putting them in safety. Uh, that's, yeah. I, I love that because, uh, well, here's the thing. I actually wanted to open up some of this hierarchy of needs things. And I think this is where we get into a stage of, of why coaching is so important. If we think about that, that, you know, and it's a triangle, right? If anybody wanted to Google it, they could go find the hierarchy of needs. Sure. And so when we start going up a level, at a certain point, it is about getting into this meaningful version of life. That's right. And at that point, it's easy for my brain to think about survival. I know how to go find food. I know how to go find water and shelter. Yep. There comes a point when I get to this next level of thought processes of now I get to design. There's a, the, the whole process of designing is a skill set. And yep. sometimes you need a, a helpmate in that skill set, like you said. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We do. Well, and, and because here's the part, right? It's like, um, one of the benefits of what a coach does, like what, what I do, not only am I looking at how and what type of filters you're looking at, right, um, or looking at things through, but the other thing that I'm able to do is by listening to your words, by listening to your attitude around something or the way that you're thinking, I can then partner with you through asking powerful questions that will actually help you shift your thinking that will actually help you shift your attitude. So basically we get out of what are those things that are limiting you? And, and together it's like we work on creating and eliminating and coming up with a new vision of not only who you're gonna become, and, but of you reaching your, your goals, right? It's a shift in your perspective that actually, it, it, um, it lights up where your beliefs are and what your values are and when you're just looking at it from yourself, you're like this, 
Yep. Right? You can only see what's in front of you. As a coach, my job is to help you expand not only what you're seeing and experiencing, but to expand your vision. Um, well, I think there's been several times where there, and, and I, don't, I can't think of one specifically, Randy, maybe you can, in which maybe you were limiting yourself and through the questions, I was able to um, help you open that up a little bit to where you could see yourself a little bit differently. Well, I, I actually can give you 100% okay. of that question. Is it like, um, I remember the very beginning of transitioning from being in production and into a leadership role um, okay. because I went from managing myself and controlling these 138 transactions right. to now I'm going to control and manage 239 agents and almost a billion dollars in volume. Right. Whole different spectrum. And for me, well, I remember very distinctly one day I was talking about like, gosh, well, it was easy when I was a buyer's agent because I did this, 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 and this. And you go, so tell me, how does that apply to what you're doing now? And I'm like, well, it <laughs> actually, it, and, and it, that conversation was actually about pre-qualification and what we would do to make sure that we're managing our time and leveraging ourselves properly. So I, I can give an example of that because it's brilliant. Yeah. And, and let's camp out there for a second, if that's okay, because um, on the question side of thing, you, you said this, you ask powerful questions. One of the things that I look at from, from a coach and why I believe in coaching so much and, and why I believe in like having a great coach that can ask great questions is that so many times I believe that we will answer out of safety. You mentioned safety a second ago. We will answer right. questions out of safety. Right. Yep. And so if you, there's so many moments where you will go, well, tell me, what did you mean by that? Or, or is this what you meant by that? Or you'll, you'll begin to reframe my words so that I have to pause and I can't move beyond the fear and I can't move beyond the obstacle and I have to face it to be able to find out what's the way around it, over it, or through it, or do we just eliminate it. Like, right. And so I, I think it's, it's really important to have powerful questions. Now, yeah. I want to draw a line where I find that most people who are more that mentor give you mm -hmm. tasks to do, they ask a lot of why questions, which I talk about this a lot. Why is a very defensive question to start with. Well, right. Talk to me about the power of questions and, and how does that actually, um, how, do you use, how do you use questions? Obviously, I'm feeding you this. I know the answer, but like for most people, they don't understand this, right? They don't understand questions in coaching. No, I think, you know, questions, the way that I like to go about questions is questions are designed to go deeper, okay? Um, they're designed to not only to see what is it that you're seeing now, but what is it that you're not seeing? What are you making some of those things mean? Um, I think there's probably been several times where I've asked you, and what are you making that mean? Um, because sometimes I think we, one of the filters that we have is a context filter around our own opinions, attitudes, beliefs, and experiences, right? And so we 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 see the world through that lens. Well, that's not my lens, so I'm able to see something different of possibly what it could mean. And by asking you those questions, what are you making it mean? Then we can put more options out on the table. Okay, um, the questions in coaching are designed to go deeper because they're designed to be learning focused. Okay, what are we learning from this? So. Um, if it's something, by the way, this is a distinction typically in counseling and therapy, the focus is on the past. Okay. So coaching right. is not therapy. Okay. Right. Coaching right. is not Thank therapy. We're that. Yeah. We're yeah. We don't, we don't talk about, no, we may, we may uh, bring up something like, okay, when has this happened to you before only to make the connection, right? right. To see that this may be a pattern that you have in your life and what do we need to, what, what's, what are we making the pattern mean to where we can break that cycle this time and you can actually have a breakthrough. That's where transformation occurs. Yeah. The purpose though is to be learning focused, meaning um, we may reflect on what that is, but learning occurs for growth. Okay. If you do something and you didn't screw it up, <laughs> okay, then you didn't learn anything. I mean, you didn't because you already knew how to do it, right? Right. And I think a lot of times one of those other things is that we can beat ourselves up a bunch. We can be extremely self-critical, myself included. Um, by the way, I, just as a side note, I just celebrated my seventh year working with my coach. Okay, oh, so wow. every good coach has a great coach, and I'm, I'm very blessed to have mine. And so we can look at reflection. What's the challenge? What's the vision? 
But you know what, that, uh, that coach, one of the other things that I think is so important is they acknowledge the growth that they've already seen in you. That's huge. Say that again, because I actually have never really thought about that. They acknowledge the growth that they've already seen in you. Because when we're on our own path, sometimes we just think, oh my gosh, am I ever going to get there? Yeah. And as a coach, you can, because you're kind of removed from it and you're looking at it from an observer standpoint, you can actually say, hey, Randy, do you know when we first started coaching, here's where you were on this and now look where you are. Oh, yeah. So that's the, again, that being learning focused, we can acknowledge the learning that's happened. We can acknowledge the growth. We can reflect on some of those things. But it, that's what happens in order to shift and transform somebody. It's having that type of focus. And that's really what um, the, the questions are getting to that level so that transformation and a shift in perspective or something can actually happen. Now, Debbie, you and I meet weekly and for a 30-minute yep. session each time. Every time we meet, we, now you're always available, which is brilliant. I say yep. always, within good reason. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that I love about that, because I, I actually, in my world, and I'm bringing some of my inference from, like, the, the people that I know who are like, well, it's too long, it's too short, it's different, it's weird, it's this, it's, you know, there's a whole myriad of uh, descriptors. Right. Yep. I actually love the 30 minute gap section because it's perfect for the actionable items that you and I come out of. Like when we get into the space of, of everything that we do in coaching is turning every coaching session into an action. There should be an action that we're bringing in, into the Absolutely. better. Side. Absolutely. And so when I look at that, the shortness of the meeting is so it, it's good for me and it's really, it's good in my world. Um, I don't know that I have a point other than just to make sure that I'm saying out loud that like a time frame of like when you're with your coach or how you're with your coach is insignificant to the amount of action that y'all can pull out of your world to put into practice. And well, I think you missed that point. Yeah, no. And I think honestly, it's like, and th this was a challenge that I had when I first became a coach, um, is that I was just like, gosh, I'm not sure what we achieved on that 30 minute time right yeah. and and I would question that and then all of a sudden I started paying attention and noticing that then somebody would come to the next week's session coaching session and they would start sharing all of these insights that they had and I'm like oh the meat of the coaching actually occurs like the the I shouldn't say the coaching the meat of the transition the meat of the learning and what you actually took away from it actually occurs between the calls yeah so it's true. almost like um on the call we may open up a thought or open up something else and as we open up it's like that's kind of flooding you all week long yeah and, and that's the benefit that's the magic of coaching i know i've experienced that um with my coach right as a client yeah. she'll give me something to think about and then it's just like three days later and i'm like oh that's what this was about, right? It's also really fun because you actually, a lot of times, you and I have a great relationship now and, and you'll you'll bring those into our calls sometimes. Like, hey, I got a question for you that was, and I'm like, let's hear it. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to answer that. I'm like, I got it. And so it, it's, it's great to be able to wrestle, which is obviously why we all need coaches. I, I, my, I think my favorite thing of, of coaching is that um, it's not overly complicated. It's very simple. Everything that you and I do is very simple. But, but here's why I truly believe it's simple, Debbie. And I want to draw, I'm going to draw a line backwards again into this thought process of the questions and the conversations. You said a second ago that like you see things differently because your lenses are different and which is very true. But here's what's really exceptional about who you are and why I want to dig into this. You have been very specifically trained on language, which I think all coaches should have. Like, my, I actually want to be a coach. On that. that is a true goal of mine, and you know this. I do. I, and, I, and a lot of people are like, why don't you, why don't you? I was like, I don't know that I've had the proper training to do mm -hmm. justice where justice should be served in the realm of coaching because um, I haven't had that kind of training. And it, there is a huge difference. There really is. If you sat with me, and I'm not – draw this comparison to make like better or worse but if you sat with me and they sat with you to have that same conversation mm -hmm. you get there faster because you're trained specifically mm -hmm. and you understand how to draw the action out mm -hmm. 
I will tell you because you know me very well and we've had these conversations. You're helping me out. Just, oh my gosh. I like talk about light years beyond when I first started. And yet there's still some of those things where I would probably still tell sell in a lot of ways because that's still a crux of mine. Uh, and so there is a difference in training to be able to not only are you looking through different filters, but you know the questions to ask to get there faster. So what, what do you, how do you structure walking into each coaching session? Yeah, that's such a great, um, that's such a great question. You know, I prepare, um, I definitely prepare. I have a preparation before I, um, I have my weeks of calls and usually what I'll do is I'll go through and I kind of say, where did we leave off? And um, I may have, then I may have had an insight after our call and I may come back and say, Hey, you know, after our call, I couldn't get this out of my, out of my head. And I'm wondering what resonates, you know, with you um, around that. So um, I think one of the biggest deals, and this was actually somebody that taught me years ago is that one of the things that I've done is I've trained myself to listen and, but to listen, not to respond, but to listen, to really understand and stay curious about what you're seeing okay yeah um, and that's probably one of the biggest preparations is to um to really listen without judgment and so one of the biggest things that i had to learn as a coach is i had to get my filters and my context out of the way yeah um and i say that so the more you know in addition to the training of learning how to be a coach I have done a tremendous amount of my own personal development and coaching. Right. Because I learn more there. It, it would be, um, I mean, if you come, if you come to one of the calls and it's something that I don't know anything about, I'm going to, I'll be the first one to tell you, Randy, I don't know. You got me on this one. Uh, what would you like it to be? And then I would probably start asking you a bunch of questions to see what that is. And Part of that is, is I don't feel like I can give anything that I don't already have. I can't see something that I don't already have. So if I really want people to grow and develop, I've got to do it for myself. And I have to constantly be moving in that direction. I had somebody ask me, when will, when will enough training, when will enough personal development be enough? And I'm like, when you put me in the ground. And then there'll probably be another class to take of how do I transform after that? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, because like, man, well, well, here's a, here's a beautiful thing. Let's like, let's draw a line into that joke that makes sense is that like, if, if we're going to be living a meaningful, a meaningful life, and we're going to go back to that idea of bump it up in that, in those needs, like there's a great opportunity to leave a legacy. And, right. and I'm telling you, like I, you, you have what you're doing is implanting legacy all, all over the place. Like I'm not your only client. I know a lot of your clients and good night. If we ran that role, we're not, cause I know this isn't about, let me brag on Debbie. This is like, Hey, let's have a co conversation about coaching. But if I did, it, it would be a really phenomenal thing. And I think it is because of how much you put back into it. You just recently did a training. How many hours did you spend on that one particular like certification that you just recently did? Right. It was 13 days. 13 days of training. And what was your preparation before that? Is this the same? Oh, yeah, no, there was a lot. I mean, yeah, because this was like a level two. And so it was 14 days before that. So literally, um, it, it's a lot. It, yeah. It's a lot of, of, of growth and personal development. And I do that because I want to be a better coach. Mm -hmm. I just, I just totally, I, I believe that. So, so much of the preparation, you know, to kind of go back to your question is really all about how am I preparing myself yeah. so that I can then come to you with an empty slate and really um, work with you, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So let's talk about the practicality side of it, right? Why would somebody even desire, to, like what, why would somebody want to go out and spend the money on coaching? I already know the, the answer to that investment yeah. question. I can all day long give proof to this. Sure. But sure. You, I guarantee you that you've had people who have quit you, right? I have. And, um, and there are some people that, um, you know, it wasn't the right time for them. There you go. That's what, I, yeah. Sometimes people need something else before they need a coach. Okay. And um, I, I will just tell you, I, I got my first coach. I didn't even understand the concept of a coach. I got my first coach in 2005. Okay. And the reason why I did 
I was, I was new to the organization and I started see it was an awards kind of ceremony. There was recognition for people that had succeeded at a high level. Okay. And as they were talking, every single one without fail talked about their coach. I immediately turned to my boss and I said, I want one of those. <laughs> yeah. Because part of it was, it was just like, wait a minute, that was something that they all had, they were all from different, you know, walks of life, male, female, old, young, like different demographics, where they lived and everything else. And the one thing they had in common is they all had a coach. I didn't even know what a coach was. Okay. Um, and there have been times where I've been a coach for a season for somebody and then they needed something else. Yeah. You know, um, and I've, I've got some clients that I have right now in my roster. I've been coaching them probably eight or nine, 10 years, as long as I've been a coach. There've been gaps, right? They may go away for a little bit and then they come back um, and do that. And here, here's the thing that I'll tell you though, is that when you, what I found as far as for long-term coaching relationships and the reason why I've stayed is I don't have to prep somebody about my my history or where I have grown or what I've done. They've been on the journey with me. Right. Holy cow. That is so like, it, it, that is so valuable that I don't have to gear somebody else up for, okay, here's where I've come from and what I've done. And now here's what, what's next. They've been on the journey with me. So I feel like I get there faster when, when we've, we've done that because we've got a history. Um, during these times right now, and I know people are looking at, um, you know, we don't even know how the economy and how all of those other kind of things have been impacted. That is more of a reason than ever to actually have a coach because we can get in our own heads and we can limit ourselves. We can believe something is not possible when it actually is possible. We just have to figure out the how is different. Um, that is a that value of that relationship and that exploration, um, it, it's not, in fact, I heard Gary Keller the other day that said, um, coaching is not a luxury. It's absolutely critical. It's critical. And, and, and I, I just think that that's a big distinction. I think that if, if you're one that wants to succeed in any area of your life, whether it's you want to succeed in your relationships, you want to succeed in your job, you want to succeed in, um, finances, you want to succeed, whatever that is. Um, at one point I had four coaches at the same time because I was working with a coach in every different area of my life. Yeah. Um, I'll never be without a coach personally. I, I mean, so me either, and especially after having the journey that I've had with you, like you, you, you really, and here's the way I look at it. I have back burners, but if you were to take and draw a picture of my back burners, it's about 72 deep. And you have a really great way of going, hey, what about this? And you reach beyond me and you grab this out the back burner and go, remember that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, now, now that you say that, yeah, of course I remember that, you know? So it's just, it's good for that. And I, I actually think that's a great picture of, of our coaching relationship. Yeah. And, and something you said a second ago about the times that we're in now, right? The COVID, Pandemic yeah. kind of time. Here, here's what I'm, what I'm watching with real estate agents, with healthcare workers, with um, retail workers, with all of the above, right? In, all these industries. What I'm watching right now is that there's so much uncertainty. Yeah, absolutely. That when I start moving, I'm also moving with uncertainty. That's right. Even though I'm moving, I'm still moving with uncertainty. And I think what I'm looking at from a coaching standpoint, and in all honesty, why I wanted to start this call, because I do think a lot of people should make the investment into coaching. I do think it is critical. Because if right now I am moving with uncertainty, wouldn't it then make sense to have a filter through a coaching relationship? to help making sure what I'm doing is not aligning out of fear, out of desperation, out of ignorance, and it's actually moving in a direction for, for which I want to move, right? You and I have talked about creating a life by design. Mm -hmm. If I just start going, that's not a design. No, no, it's the difference between getting in your car, saying I'm going to take a trip to wherever, 
and not knowing where you're going and just drawing, driving around in circles versus here's where I want to go. And there may be some, I mean, we've, we've got a big roadblock right now, right? We have this thing called COVID-19 show up and it is, it has been a roadblock. It doesn't mean that there's not a detour route. We can still get to where we need to go. It's just a detour. And a lot of people will get stuck and think, oh my gosh, the road's closed. I can't go anymore. And that's not necessarily true. The coaching relationship, again, we begin to explore how and what are you filtering information and what are you making it mean that's keeping you from reaching your fullest potential? Well, and, and what you and I have have discovered and are discovering now, like through our coaching um, in, in, in what we're going through right now is that um, all of the things that I have done or that I am doing, the feeling is that I've got to throw it away and reinvent. And that's just not true. It's all translatable. And so we're figuring out how it translates. And the reality though, is that I do have blinders on. It doesn't matter. I know it's COVID, but like, I'm telling you right now, I know that I can do this. And it's, it's almost an unnatural um, or, or unrealistic moment of like, I can power through this. It's like, or, mm -hmm. right. And because like, I, I, and I'm living in that space right now um, with re reframing how I'm going about the relationship building side of things in, in my business. There are business operations for relationship and I've, I've had to change everything. That's right. And, and you and I are looking at that and going, no, 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 it's not throw it away and start over. That's right. That's it's, right. Everything is transitioning into this new space. It's a reinvention process. Yeah. That's it's a not, it's, it's a reinvention. It's not coming up with it, like throw everything out and do it. It's how do we need to reinvent so that we still get to the destination? Well, it, gosh, here's a great analogy that I think is awesome. And I'm going to give myself a really great pat on the back for it. You've I'll watched, catch it too. Yeah, yeah. It's Apollo 13. It's there you Apollo go. 13. Oh, that's perfect. I love that it. Is, yeah. That is coaching 101. They go in and they've literally found all the stuff that they have and said, yep, we still have to get there. We still have to get them home. Mm -hmm. But instead of having your like awesome supercomputer thrusters and all, now you've got like a vacuum hose and like a stick of gum and, yeah. and we can still get there. And, and I think that's one of the biggest things that I, my, I didn't know anything about coaching. I just jumped in. I was like, okay, coaching. Yeah, sure. Whatever. And I think the biggest thing that I took away is that um, the repeat of a very cliche phrase, our goals are not movable. That's right. Our goals need to be immovable. And if they are immovable, then it's our actions that change. That's right. And That's exactly right. you have helped me always adjust my actions to actually move towards my goals. And, and you've worked with me to make sure that my goals were my goals. That's yeah. a big thing too. And that's true. That's yeah. true. Sometimes people just put something on a piece of paper and yet there's no real intention or purpose for them. And without that, I think that's another big thing that a coach does is to really understand what why is that goal so important that's the only time a why question is is powerful is yeah. understanding why we're going to go do something and why we're going to use our valuable resource of time that is a, a it's non-renewable right yeah. yeah yeah well yeah. man if i so let's let's go back to like people who looking at right now to is there an opportunity for people to test out coaching i don't like this is true a true question like i have no idea yeah. I have a contract and I love my contract and I will put it in my lock box and keep it for forever. But it's sure. like, okay, I hear you. I hear everybody. I yeah. see it. I'm afraid. Yep. Yep. What, what would be the process of that? Absolutely. So um, first of all, I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody uh, and just a conversation is what I call it. Okay. Um, not, and, and not to say that I would be the best coach for you, but to have the exploration around is coaching appropriate? Um, is it an area that you're coachable in, right? Um, and when I say that you're coachable in, you really, you need to be able to be in a space of learning in order to be um, coachable. So are you coachable? And, you know, what does that relationship look like? And I'm happy to do that with anybody to just explore the coaching relationship. And I'm not the only one that can do that. There's lots of other um, places that they can do that as well. Okay. Well, I'll make sure that if anybody wants to, you can email me because I won't, I won't murder your inbox. 
but I have no challenges with them murdering my inbox. So I'll type my email in so that people can message me if they want to have a conversation with you. Okay, perfect. Um, and I'll, I'll just go ahead to um, Randy. I'll just uh, mattersofinfluence.com um, okay. is, is, is the website that I have with one of my peer um, coaching uh, partners. And um, we've got both of our bios on there. We kind of have specializations in different areas. And so um, they can they can also get some more information there and and get in touch with me through that site as well. So I, I have one comment that, that popped up so far and it's asking advice on choosing or finding the right coach. What would you say there? Oh, yeah. No, that's a great question. I, I think that's why the exploration conversation is important. OK. okay. And um, so part of it is, is to have and, and sometimes people will come to me and they don't they don't necessarily have clarity on specifically what they're looking for in a coach. So go back people, that. you said the exploration conversation, what do you mean? Exploration, to explore the conversation. Ex with, exploration, got exploration. It. yes. To explore that with, um, yeah, with somebody it, as far as, because you're looking for, can I connect with this person? Okay, right. and, and that's important. I mean, you wanna be able to connect to the person. Um, a, a lot of times I tell people, and I probably said this to you when we first started working, there are probably going to be times where you don't like me and because I'm going to kind of like push you in an area where you're just like going, God, really? Yeah. Um, and so it, and yet you respect it and you're grateful for it. Right. I mean, because coaching is putting you out of your comfort zone. That's what I mean by somebody that is coachable. If you don't want to be out of your coach comfort zone, you probably don't want to get into coaching because it's going to push you out of it. Yeah. Um, and so then I would be looking at what, what's the credentials of this person, not, here's one point I will make. They don't have to have done what you want to do, okay? Or they don't have to do more than you. I'm going to give you a perfect example of that. Phil Jackson, he had one of the best basketball players ever in Michael Jordan, and yet he couldn't do what Michael Jordan did, yet the partnership of the two of them was amazing. Yeah. You can use Tiger Woods as another example. Now, I know earlier I talked about um, the difference between professional coaches and coaches, but the thing that I want to tell you is that a coach doesn't have to have done what you want to do. They have to understand what it is you want to do and know how to be in partnership with you and co-create that with you. And, and in the co-creation, have a skill set. I, I, and I know that I'm harping on that too. Like, no, you do. Yeah, yeah. But, you, you, but, do want, you want to have the credentials. That's yeah. what I mean by that. You want them to be credentialed to be a coach, to coach yeah. you. Um, so having done something is not as important as having the credential of yeah. a coach. Um, well, and so yeah. that's, I, I don't know if that answers that question or not, if there was something more specific. If you have experience with a coach, um, if I get somebody new and I'm doing an exploration with them, oftentimes I'll say, um, you know, have you had experience with coaching before? And they'll say yes or no. And I'll say, tell me what worked and what didn't work. Okay. okay. And I'm filtering through that to make sure that my, that might be, may or may not be my style as well. Right. Okay. I, I, I want to add to it. So if I were looking at it, because um, I, from a market center standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, I actually have uh, coaching contracts for, um, Let's see, we have four different coaching, five different coaching contracts in our office. And so yep. for me, the way that I talk to our, our leadership about those contracts is that like, if, there's, if there is some sort of disconnect, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a rough ride. It is. Now, yeah. here, here's the biggest challenge with the disconnect. If it's because they're asking you the right questions and it makes you uncomfortable, that's an okay thing. That's if, right. That's if right. they're having you dig into some of these fears and unearth things that aren't really the best feelings in the world, mm -hmm. that's okay. But if there's just a moment to where like y'all are clashing, if you feel judged or if they, the way they ask or the way they talk, that's right. if, those are, if those are weird, then that's yeah. okay. But you can't not choose somebody out of fear. You can't not choose somebody out of like the, the awkward feelings that are created as they unearth things, right? Because right. we're, we're looking to move forward. That means you're going to grow, which means it's going to hurt. I mean, think about a kid cutting a teeth. Like my, my little two-year-old daughter, she just cut all of her molars all at the same time. Miserable. Yeah. Growing teeth hurts. Yeah. If you're in a coaching relationship, you are going 
new teeth. Some All of it, it, that's true, that's yeah. true. And here's what I'll say to that, is that if they're actually challenging you to get out of your comfort zone and they're doing it in a manner that's in partnership with you, that is the connection. Yeah. Because you can't see something or you can't ask a question about somebody that's getting them out of their comfort zone unless you're connected to them. Well, gosh, and here's the thing. What, what we always talk about is that there's a needs analysis that happens in any relationship, yes. any sales process, anything. That's right. And so if I've taken the time to understand where your needs are, it yep. would be almost impossible for me as a coach to not meet you at your level or to meet you where you are to, to figure out how Absolutely. to reverse this. Absolutely. So yep. I think that's a big thing is if you have a coach that doesn't actually know where your needs lie, yep. then it's not a good fit. Yep. If you've got a coach who hasn't taken the time to co-create with you, it's probably not a good fit. If you're being told a lot, it's probably not a good fit. So it's probably easier to say, here's some things to watch out for than like, here's how you choose it. It's like, well, Here's what you just watch out for. Sure, absolutely. And I would encourage, and because there's been times where I've, uh, normally I can sense it, um, but there's been times where um, I need to have a conversation with that person or I've encouraged you, hey, if there's ever a time where I'm pushing you in a direction and it doesn't feel right or you felt judged, we need to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, most of the time I sense it first and yeah. I'll go back and I'll go, hey, I, I want to just check something out. I felt a little funky after we talked last time. And I'm just wondering, did I push you too fast? I've, I've had clients before saying, okay, back off the pushing. You're going too, you're pushing too hard. And I'm like, okay, all right, tell me what's coming up for you. Then we can have that conversation, but I'll back off. I'll back off. I'll tell you, I think, and this isn't to just to paint how awesome you are. It's to paint everybody who is like you, because there's a lot of great coaches who are just like you. Yeah, absolutely. What you do for me is a when you and I are talking and when you are having conversation, I get the opportunity to be released from judging myself. I get to be released from mm -hmm. the pressure. I get to be released from like the tenacity. Like there's there's freedom in the way that we have our conversations. So that now I've I've almost stepped into a blank space that now I can have the right conversation to figure out. Once I walk out of this room, I've got to pick up all the pieces and they still go with me. Like I got to put them at the door, but when I yeah. walk out of the room, I get to pick up the pieces and go, this is how I build that next. There you go. Yeah, that's good. I, I yeah. Cause I walk in like, gosh, if anybody knows me and I think a lot of people who would be chiming into this, they would have to know me. I'm a hundred miles an hour. Like yep. I, I pivot on a dime. Like I'm, I'm moving all the time. I'm changing all the time, super creative. And so my mind does this, Huh? And gosh, like you have brought sanity and clarity to how I will get where I need to go. And in two and a half years, to give you credit where credit is, you would never do this. And I'm going to do this. Like we were 130 agents, we're 340 agents now. We're about to bring on another big team. We are, we were 70, uh, 70 million shy of being a billion dollars that ran through our office. Like we have guys who have gone from our office into leadership, into um, regional leadership. We've had people who have gone on to go take leadership positions in other market centers. We've had teams that have doubled their business over like all of that is because your investment in me is making sure that I'm the best version of me and that my intentions are set so that then I can invest in every single person that I touch. And, and you have done that for me in a huge way. And there's a lot of people just like you. And I think it makes sense to be in coaching, to be with a certified coach, and to be with somebody who absolutely can help you move in the direction of your goals. That's not just telling you what to do. They're, you're not a mentor. You've never been a mentor to me in that capacity. You've always been a coach. And like, I, I, I am eternally grateful. for. So what is meant for me for the cost is, it would be worth every penny over and over and over and over again because I got there faster. Mm -hmm. But I think better than getting there faster, I got there better than I probably would have. Yeah. And, and that, that means more, to be better. To be yeah. better than I would have been when I got there. So it's, it's huge for me. So let me make sure. Uh, it's just an honor to be on that journey. And, and, that, and, and honestly, it, it's an honor to be, to be there with you. So it's well, cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Is there anything, like, obviously you knew that I wanted to talk to you about the stuff and open up some doors, but is there anything that I missed that you wanted to add in at all? 
No, I think I would just encourage everybody to consider what what um, what area of life um, you know would be helpful for you to have a breakthrough in, some transformation in, and 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 some success in. It may be an area that you've always stumbled in, or it could be that you're achieving incredible success and and yet you know you haven't reached your potential. Yep. So um, I would just encourage you to explore that, and if there's anything that I can do to help to get you into that type of partnership and relationship, um, please reach out. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. Well, have a great, great night and we'll see you on 7.30. See you Monday. That's right. Bye.